Hi, my name is Jack. If you're new to this channel, this channel is about adulting, personal finance, and self-development. And in this video, let's talk about yung mga charges and fees na nakukuha natin sa savings account natin. So, yung iba dito, malamang alam nyo na, but probably yung iba dito, bago lang sa inyo. So, stick around until the end of this video. If nababawasan nyo yung savings account mo na hindi mo nalalaman, it's probably because one of these charges. So, let's begin with number one. So, una dito sa list ko is yung dormancy charges. So, paano ba tayo nacha-charge siya ng dormancy charge? So, if walang transaction dun sa account mo for the past five years, i-charge ka ng bank mo ng dormancy charge. So, nagkakost lang naman ito ng 30 pesos per month. Pero yun nga, kaya ka nga nag-open ng savings account. It's for you to save and hindi mabawasan yung pera mo. So, beware of this charge. Number two on my list is falling below yung maintaining average daily balance mo. So in short, nag-fall ka dun sa maintaining balance sa kailangan savings account mo. So dito naman, parang charge lang nila ito if for two consecutive months, below ka dun sa average daily balance na kailangan mo for your account. So dun sa mga nakita ko sa websites ng mga banks natin, it ranges from 300 to 500 per month pagka nag-fall ka below dun sa uh, maintaining balance nila. Pero I think, dapat 2 consecutive months kang uh, nag-fall below doon. So, tsaka nila sa charge yan. So, for you to be sure kung magkano yung charge sa'yo, just look at your bank's website. Number 3 on this list is over-the-counter transaction. So, usually naman, nag-a-appear lang ito pagka yung transaction mo is uh, outside Metro Manila yung dedepositohan mo account or mag-withdraw ka sa ibang branch. Basta, uh, it's confusing kasi hindi siya standard. It varies from banks to banks. Pero I think recently lang ito nangyari. Before, alam ko, hindi naman ito, hindi uh, naman siya nag-charge pagka ano eh, uh, inter-region or outside sa Metro Manila. But in the recent years, binago na nila ito. So just beware na if over-the-counter transaction yung gagawin mo. It's deposit or withdraw. So yun, just beware na merong charges na when it comes to this. Number 4 on this list is ATM transaction. So for this one, I think lahat tayo almost siguro familiar with this na pag may ginawa kang ATM transaction na hindi dun sa bank mo. So for example, uh, BDO yung uh, debit card mo and naggawa ka ng transaction over other ATM banks, uh, may charge yun. So usually naman, nag-range lang to from 10 pesos to 15 pesos pagka cash withdrawal and pagka inquiry lang ng balance. Usually ranges from 1 peso to 2 pesos lang. So for this one, ito mga bago ko lang to nalaman. So it's cool to learn new things. So for this one, number 5 is closing yung savings account mo within 30 days of opening date. So pagka nag-open ka ng savings account mo and kailangan mo nang kuhain yung pera mo and i-close mo yung savings account mo, uh, yung bank will charge you from 300 to 500 depending on the bank. So yun, uh, so this is something yung pera sa akin na if you close yung savings account mo within 30 days of its opening date, may additional charges for you. Number 6 on this list is replacement of a passbook or debit card. So, hindi ko alam kung gano'n ito kadalas nangyayari, but if this happens to you and magre-request ka ng replacement, uh, for passbook, usually ranges from 200 pesos. Pagka naman sa debit card, mag-ask ka ng replacement, it usually ranges from 120 to 150 pesos. Number 7 on this list is pin-related concerns. So, for this one, nakita ko lang siya sa website ng Security Bank. And to be honest, I think Security Bank has the most detailed website among all the banks at Chineco. So, pag mag-ask ka sa kanila ng pin replacement or pin reset, they surely will charge you 100 pesos for that. Okay, before we end this video, let's respond to a comment from my last video. So, this one is from Almira Galicia. So, sabi niya, Sir, passbook and ATM disadvantage naman. Please, hihi. <laughs> So, I think yung pinaka-question dito is yung advantage and disadvantage for passbook only and debit card only na savings account. Because pwede naman talaga yung both na meron but let's focus more on dun sa passbook only and debit card only na savings account. Okay, let's start na sa advantage of having a passbook only na savings account. So, I think yung major na uh, advantage na to is mas may restriction ka into accessing your account. So, okay siya pagka gusto mo talaga mag-save ng pera kasi hindi mo siya mababawasan ng basta-basta. So, isa pang advantage nito is mas maganda rin siya pang track dun sa lumalabas at pumapasok na pera sa account mo. Kasi lahat ng nangyayari sa account mo is nakalista dun. So, makita mo agad yun dun na sa listahan ng sa passbook mo. So, I think yung pinaka sa advantage lang nito is it, kailangan mo ng emergency na pera, hindi ka agad makakapag-withdraw. Because uh, para makapag-withdraw uh, ka ng passbook, kailangan open yung bank mo. So, banking hours 
in kailangan uh, dun sa branch mismo ng bank mo. So, when it comes to ATM naman na savings account, yung kabaligtaran nito. So, yung advantage nito is mas madaling ma-access yung pera mo. So, madali kang makapag-withdraw sa ATM machine lang or any ATM machine nga. Pwede kahit hindi yung pag-bank. So, yun. Yun yung major advantage for uh, savings account na ATM machine lang. So, yung disadvantage naman is uh, if wala kang discipline, uh, mababawasan mo siya ng mababawasan kasi mag-withdraw ka na mag-withdraw or ipang de-debit mo siya ng ipang de-debit pang bili ng kung ano-ano. Additional information na lang when it comes to this kind of savings account. So, for savings account na may passbook, usually mas mataas yung uh, account opening na kailangan mo pag mag Yung unang deposit mo, mas mataas compared sa uh, ATM lang na savings account and also yung maintaining balance mo, mas mataas pagka passbook compared sa ATM na savings account. In the end, it all boils down sa discipline mo sa pag-manage or pag mo ng pera. So, para sa akin kasi, it has both equally an advantage and disadvantage. So, I just share to you yung story nung sa friend ko kung paano siya, yung style niya when it comes to this. Kasi, may problema din siya when it comes to handling yung pera niya kasi madalas gumagasa siya by a debit or nagbibitro siya ng pera. So, ang ginawa niya, nag-open siya ng dalawang savings account. Yung isa, yung passbook only. Yung isa, yung may debit card. So, yung ginagawa niya, majority ng pera niya, yung hindi niya talaga gagasosin, nilagay niya na lang dun sa passbook niya. And yung mga panggasos niya, yung amount doon, yung maliit lang, is yung nasa ATM debit card niya. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope I was able to give you an answer na justifiable. So, ayun, uh, please leave a comment because uh, it will help me tailor yung content ko and uh, it will also help you kasi it will give you yung content na gusto niyo talaga and ayun, additional na lang, uh, please hit the like button. It will help yung YouTube algorithm promote my videos. And ano ba? Uh, subscribe for videos na kagaya nito. For, if gusto mo yung content regarding personal finance, adulting, and self-development, uh, subscribe to my channel. So ayun lang. Hope you uh, have a great day. Alright, that's it. Bye!